All right, I'm doing a cold open on this one because I'm excited and I don't want to waste any time. We remember this tank, right? Talked about it quite a bit, I think, showed it. I talked to Chris and we went back and forth and we came up with 2.0 and I just got it and I want to show you. Look at that. <laughs> It is just, I mean, perfect. Everything about it. It's exactly what we talked about. He obviously, any of the little flares and stuff, totally on him. He came up with all the little extra details. Like, I never would have thought of that um, inlay in the center. Um, and then we actually do have the pockets on the side to represent where the texture is going to go. So um, this will actually be not necessarily proud, but smooth with some type of pattern texture cast into the side. Um, but he kind of... The, overall the whole thing's smaller and he said oh it's not to scale or whatever but to me it's perfect i mean this is exactly what i would want um it is just exactly exactly how i asked him to do it he uh got these two i i just shoved these petcocks in there to kind of get an idea of uh, alignment but i think the tank would maybe live further back um obviously once in the cells back on that'll kind of dictate um placement but proportions shape style everything about this is just beyond perfect um so i painted it silver so we could get an idea of what it's going to look like um roughly as aluminum um so the the textured section will be here in the center um and then everything else is just going to be mirror polished and so it'll be you know very striking i think uh to draw in attention but it is just very 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 cool I keep running into shit but if you look down the pipeline, I mean, it's just big old fat tire, kind of slender, everything else. And then the tank is now narrower than the engine, which is exactly what I wanted. The tank being this small will actually help. Uh, I'm, I'm, I really like to try and make the Triumph engine look as big as possible. I think that's the biggest downfall of a uh, stylistic custom um, Triumph is compared to like a Harley where the engine just takes up so much. It just looks so huge, which I like. Um, I want to kind of give that same illusion with a Triumph engine. So having that small of a tank will help cartoon enlarge the engine. But also with that small scale nacelle up there, that's going to help a lot too with the, um, the smaller tank kind of pushing your eyes towards that nacelle. But for this video, my goal would be, it'd be really, really cool... I need to do this rear engine mount and normally like you can see where I gouged out the old one um, traditionally the engine uh, the rear engine mount is off the back it's uh, a stock stock one it's cast in um, this one was just that tube that came across the back um, and then the plates threaded into the end of it um, what I'm gonna do is I want to make something it's got this tab brace already in here um, which I don't know if I'll gouge that out and start over or not. But what I'm thinking is if I make a bolt-on rear engine mount that will snake in on the back side, and then I will use, um, I'll make like a sub uh, bracket here even that will then use those two mounts and these two mounts. Normally the plate would go through those. I just want it to all kind of web back behind here and then I'll just make it so it slips down in and bolts in. That way, when you look at it, it just ends there. There's not all this garbage kind of hanging off the back and so i'm hoping it'll kind of keep that uh, suspension look of the of the engine that we have right now the other thing is we're still trying to decide chris would love to he, we, we've talked back and forth he would love to make me an oil tank to go with you know these two together um it all kind of comes down to timeline i am going to have a backup plan which is going to be this old um, thermos body we've talked about that before um, so I'm still kind of keeping that in mind as I go, um, but I also need to come up with a battery tray, fender stays, all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping I can kind of proportionately take up this space. Um, I'm not a big fan of the giant wheel gaps, and so um, hopefully I can kind of do some correcting there. But um, yeah, I mean, this, this tank is just, I can't stop looking at it. It is so, so perfect. It's going to be super fun. It's obnoxious and cartoony and exaggerated. And that's exactly what I wanted.
but you can just see the proportions are amazing. And then I'm gonna box in that and um, I'm doing a spring seat. Not, not my first option, but I do wanna actually ride this thing. So spring seat is the way to go for me. I wanted to throw this front end on really quick because Chris asked to send a video, um, just kind of quick talking about this um, new the 2.0 with the front end. So I wanted to kind of show you guys too how much better of a of a gap we've got here. Um, it should clear a lot more options. I still think I'm going to have to run a taller bar, which is fine with me, um, but it's going to allow um, full swing once I cut away those uh, stops. But the gap and the flow, I think, is really, really fun. The way it kind of pushes up forward. Um, and again, when we put, when we decide how long the fork leg is going to have to be to clear the um, down tubes, um, once we do all of that, it may actually level this line out. Um, the amount of rake that it's going to have in it um, is going to be dictated by how long that front end has to be. So, it might have a little bit of a Frisco. Um, kind of uh, tilt to it which is fine I kind of like that um, when it's done right so uh, it'll be it'll be interesting much 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 more narrow okay so now you guys get to listen to me ramble because I'm kind of struggling with this idea and I think if I talk out loud I might kind of figure it out to be honest with you, I was actually kind of trying to figure out if I could eliminate the rear engine mount entirely and just have bottom mount, front mount, top mount. Um, I thought that would be really interesting, but I'm afraid of risking that on this bike. Um, I think maybe that'd be an experiment for something else. Um, so my next idea was to put it on the inside, and I was going to make it bolt on, um, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I actually might make it um, fixed in place. I think if it's bolt on and I was trying to put it on as like the last piece, I don't know if I can sneak it in where I think I could. Um, and so it's kind of making me wonder if I should weld it in place and then check to make sure, well, I need to check to make sure I could swing it in um, if I did choose to weld it in place. I think with, if I took the front and the bottom bolt out, I think I could actually go up and like almost touch the head to the top rail. Um, I am gonna have a top mount here, so we have to kind of consider that. But if, I don't know, I'm just trying to think. I may try and wrestle this thing around and like imagine. Um, I've got this, I don't even remember how thick this is, but some pretty heavy wall stuff. Um, that was gonna be kind of the crossover part. And then I have um, this smaller diameter tube that I've cut up. I have to cut these to length, but um, these are going to be, as long as I don't drop them all, um, that's going to be like over the bolt, and then I'm going to have this solid rod connecting those two, so it'll be a piece of small tubing connected with solid rod between the two, and then that will actually be connected to this tube here. Um, I kind of want it to look really clean. Um, and I thought maybe having it all out of round piece would look, you know, similar to what we have up here. So it kind of tie the two together. So I don't know. Um, I just don't want it to look hokey because I'm just not a big fan of like the factory pumped out aftermarket frames. And they all kind of look like they were made at like tractor supply. And I don't like that. I want it to look a little bit more, you know, thought out and, um, you know, layering. Because I even, I have this uh, one inch that fits over this solid or this heavy wall tube really really nicely so i thought if i could make some ornamental like sleeve over top of it and then have it kind of look like compounding you know with like levels and layers and just trying to make it look as finished as possible i was trying to figure out if i could cap you know that area to have a flat spot for the this to what i mean it's just getting it's getting out of hand i don't know guys so i don't know i'm still thinking about what to do but I didn't really get anywhere explaining it. I thought it was have, gonna have a revelation or something, but it just didn't come. Let me, let me keep playing around. What I think I do wanna do is I've cut this piece of square tube 
and I'm going to saddle that cracked area and then I think I will set the um, crossbar I'll have that go through there and that'll be they'll be fixed and then this will saddle the damaged area because obviously he rode it for a ton of miles with just that uh, repair he did there and he said everything was fine so I'm assuming there was some type of issue with that first way it was assembled maybe the engine was stressing it or something I don't know but um I think if I have that which is going on the back side the thing I didn't want to do but I think with what everything what's all going on here um and my fear of not being able to get the engine in and out the uh as easily as I was hoping um I think this is probably going to be the, the answer um I'm still going to run the uh mounts on the inside um, I just think I'm going to approach it a little bit differently, um, which is cool. Um, I'm, I'll be happy with it. It'll be fine. Um, but, uh, I think this is the way to go. It'll strengthen that area that's already damaged. It'll look kind of finished. Um, I'm thinking I may bring that, uh, notch in a little bit further, um, tighten up, hold on my fingers in the way, tighten up that space. So then that way, um, it's all just a little bit more tidy. Uh, but, but yeah, I've kind of got some ideas. Um, I'm still, I don't know. I, I really do wish I could figure out a way to just not have anything back here. I think it would look really clean, but, um, I also need to keep in mind that I'm not happy with the gap between this down tube and the rear wheel. I like when all this is kind of filled in and I'm not really going to be able to achieve a, a filled in look. So maybe having this pushed to the backside isn't such a bad thing. Uh, just because I want it to be on the inside, but then getting the engine in and out will be nearly impossible. Just doesn't seem worth it, um, especially when no one's even going to notice the little details like that. But I also want to fill in, um, you know, a space in here with like a brace or I've talked about a couple of different ideas, but I need the head steady. But then I also want something just to kind of tie in where the two uh, down tubes meat and then bring it to the backbone but i still need to kind of think about that too but um yeah so i think i'm gonna get this one on and i'll show you uh kind of what i'm thinking okay i think i'm not so disappointed in this now that i'm looking at it uh what i'm gonna do is where the engine plates normally go on this side i'm gonna have those uh standoffs um and i'm gonna continue with the backside idea but what i think i'll do is uh this is thick enough wall that i would feel comfortable tapping it i also could probably put like a uh threaded slug in there too but um i'm gonna try and tap it first and run like a pretty good hefty size bolt um but what i would do is then utilize a chunk of this as the kind of spacer or whatever um so then it would plug in directly to uh the end and then i could have the kind of i don't want it to look like anything that um any you know i don't want it to look too finch <laughs> every some people i know what i'm talking about but um you know there was a guy who made his entire bikes out of um just solid bar it was interesting um but i think if i you know, kind of create these, create these mounts, um, kind of all tying together. I have, I might actually use this instead. This is pretty, pretty heavy stuff. I think it would work good and it'd probably look a little bit better, a little sturdier. Um, but if I come off of here and then just come straight out and then make a chunk of this actually part of the mount, then when it's all bolted up, it would be all smooth. I think that would look kind of nice. Um, I don't know. I'm going to box in this backside. I'll cut out a plate and box that in and then, you know, weld it all up, smooth it all out. It actually might kind of look more like a cast lug. Um, you know, that I like lugs. I, I think that's um, probably the tidiest look. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you saw this coming and so now you get to celebrate because I was ignorant <laughs> and had convinced myself that I was going to be able to run my mounts on the inside. Um, eh, I'm not gonna try and come up with any excuses. I just thought if I convinced myself hard enough, I could make it work. 
there's just no way I have any amount of room to make that happen. Um, the only real solution I'd kind of try to come up with that I could still try and make it work would be using a thicker plate or uh, enough of a piece of round stock that I could thread that and use that as the nut. Um, but it's just still cutting it way too close. Um, you know, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. Again, I'm sure quite a few of you are like, yeah, duh. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a bit frustrating. All right, you know what? Never say never. I'm, I wasn't about to give up. I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to make this work. So, um, I grabbed some coupling nuts to give myself as much room as possible. Threw those on the back side of some bolts. And then I just bent up some of this, uh, whatever the size this is, I don't know. Anyway, I'm happy. I think it's going to work. I'm going to have to trim off the back side of that. Um, there'll be enough thread left um, that I feel comfortable with it. I'm, you know, it's not that impressive of a, of a amount to begin with, you know, like with the standard ones. So I think something's going to work regardless. But I went ahead and just welded directly to that uh, existing tube piece. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice that off and then I'm going to thread, let's go to the other side. I'm going to thread this uh, chunk of tube, um, cylinders are done. Um, I'm going to thread this, I already kind of played with it there to make sure. I'm going to have to drill this side out obviously to fit whatever hardware I use. But I um, can tap the end of it. And it will be threaded on both sides, and then there'll be like this chunk of it here will be a sleeve that will go over the piece of hardware. But I just um, wanted to kind of prove the concept there first before I did all this. So that is going to be really good. It's got plenty of uh, thread. I don't know what percentage this tap is, but um, regardless, I'm stoked on that. I, I really think that's going to work. I probably will add um, maybe like a little piece on the back you know, or whatever to kind of triangulate it. Maybe I'll do it midway so it looks cool or somewhere in there to make it look a little bit more um, finished. Um, and then obviously I'll do a bunch of filling and sanding and all that kind of good stuff to make it look nice. But yeah, I I'm, I just, I wanted to make it work. I figured it was worth a shot. If it didn't, I could cut it all back off, but that, that's going to do what it needs to. So a bunch of trimming, a bunch of cleaning, a bunch of making it look pretty. Um, but that should be a pretty skinny little tight, design if i can get the mount for this figured out because i'm gonna use this as my backup plan again i think i've said that before chris was considering um coming up with the tank design but um we'll see uh i it will be easy to create some type of uh, mount for this in the meantime but uh, if i can get that in in place and then get my fender figured out and this uh i want to cover the uh, seat pan area if I can get all those things done I could actually spend a little bit of time sanding on this thing and get it back off the um, fixture to just sand and file and make all my uh, unions look good um, before I come back to it again so we talked about the rear engine mounts being removable I was gonna slice it and then thread it and bolt it on but before I got to that point, I was kind of doing a little bit more welding on it to really make sure it wasn't going to pop off or anything. I kind of want to loosen it up and see if I can, without rocker boxes on it, swing it up to where it would clear and I could actually take it in or out if I wanted. Um, before I put those in, there was tons of room uh, because this comes straight down and this comes straight down. There's no real swinging or anything that needs to happen. Um, so at this point, it would mostly just be whether or not it could come kind of up and forward enough to get out of these way. So I want to take it apart. I'm assuming that these are under a decent amount of tension after, you know, welding it all in place. And in fact, I can already tell that those are fairly sticky. Kind of want to see what direction this. Uh, didn't visibly, it didn't really move at all. This one's nice and smooth. 
And I think the other two on that side are pretty smooth, so maybe it's not as bad as I thought. So that one was nice and free, and this one's pretty free. So I don't think those really moved, uh, thankfully. Um, now let's get... I bet I'm blocking the view perfectly. Ooh. I think when I do this finally, I'm probably gonna end up doing like uh, all uh, like a stud with uh, stainless steel. Um, Like acorn nuts or I don't know something that looks cool okay well that was everything came out way too smooth um, the cylinders aren't technically really bolted down but they shouldn't go anywhere um, but let's see in theory eh, let's hope I can kind of just go whoop and it'll come up uh, I did put my upper um, head steady I'll have to make like something that kind of reaches out, I guess. But um, all right, let's see. We'll pretend like this thing's on the ground, and we're gonna put an engine in it. Uh, oh, okay. I see what it's called. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think that might be an option. Oh, uh-oh. I think I broke off one of those. Oh, man, I did. Okay, well, other than the fact that this tack did not hold it good enough, um, I think that it, it, this, this actually might work because if I'm coming, if I came in at this much of an angle and got past everything, in and out, and then you swung down. But I think I might just leave these as part of the frame. Um, is it the most convenient thing? No. Is this my bike? Yes. So if I want to make future AJ really upset, then, you know, that's for me to call. But, uh, okay, well, now i got to put it all back in and try and tack that better. I'm cutting out two different sides here um, to box all this in and um, I wanted to have like a really finished um, flat surface. Um, I am running a spring seat so um, I'll still have to do like the bosses and stuff but I'm just trying to get this frame to a point where I can like just uh, spend a couple days um, grinding and smoothing everything out and then going back and then I'll have to fill some more spots. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the backbone is like pinched, uh, I think starting about here, and then it goes flat. Um, so trying to work with the weird shape that this is, um, I followed this line pretty good, and this here. I don't think it's quite level, um, but it's going to be close enough that uh, when I go back and try and like make everything look pretty, I'll have a decent amount of uh, filler. Um, Oh, uh, well, feeling weld here, but uh, I'm hoping that once I kind of get it all flattened out, it'll still have obviously the shape, but it is now 8 a.m., so that means I have to actually get to work, so um, we got a little bit done this morning. I will probably work some more on it tonight and so on, um, but like I said, I would like to get to where I could pull it back off of this, get the rest of the blue paint off, um, and just start doing a bunch of grinding, well, filler welding, grinding, blah, blah, blah. So, um, we still need sissy bar mounts. We still need oil tank mounts. We still need, um, what else? I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of things like I'm forgetting, but, um, little bit at a time.
I think that's going to look way better than if I just did a flat plate and then weld it. And then it would just be this big flat. I kind of like this idea that it's going to have kind of some levels to it. I'll go back and smooth everything out so it kind of looks like a big, maybe like stamped out piece. Maybe that sounds good, if you know, saying it that way. But um, I'm just going to try and do, because it's so thin and this pipe is pretty heavy, I think I'm just going to do that like sheet metal tack trick and just do 10 million little tacks um this isn't structural at all so it really just needs to be all kind of filled in uh, if i was better with a tig welder i think tig would be probably the best way to do it but i'd probably make more of a mess than it's worth okay so i have a lot to learn about uh like welding something in the intent to then smooth it all back out um there's a few little tiny spots where i'm like oh that actually worked out um everywhere else it just has those huge cutbacks. Um, what I ended up doing was, uh, I've seen enough guys on YouTube doing sheet metal work that they, you know, sh tell you about how you jump around and distribute the heat. And I thought, oh, what a perfect opportunity to practice that. And so I went ahead and tried it. And I, uh, I don't remember if I filmed that part, but I, I like jumped all around and so I had all these tacks and I just kept jumping in between and then in between. And then eventually I just like filled it all in. And then it created all those little, I don't even know what to call them. But anyway, so now all along this edge, I've got that really ugly, uh, inconsistent line. Um, I'm trying to decide if I go back and weld on it again and then have material to remove or if I'd be better off. Um, I think I'm going to powder coat the frame. I, can't just, I was going back and forth between uh, powder coat and paint. I think I'm going to end up with powder coat. Um, and they make that uh, metallic filler. Uh, the uh, ferrous filler or whatever. I don't know what it is, but um, I think I may just do that. Cause I, I mean, these are like, they're in there. I don't have to really worry about structurally, um, but the aesthetic right now is just horrible. I'm really unhappy with it. So um, I want to fill those two holes in to um, uh, probably weld those up, but uh, they were full of Bondo. Um, but yeah, I mean, even like up here at this original joint, it was full of Bondo. Um, this side has a big gouge in it. I was trying to kind of smooth that out and it's just, it, it's going to have to get filled. I think, I think that's really the answer, which I didn't want to do. Um, I was really hoping to have this thing hundred percent steel, but, uh, just the amount of time it would take for this to look good. And it's going to be under the seat. The other thing I want to try and do uh while it's here on the bench is the foot pegs are going to come off the bottom of the frame and i think what i want to do is have like a bit uh, like a bolt-on style lug on the bottom and then have it come up and then i'm going to right in the middle of the primary cover well maybe a little higher than middle in line with the uh, shift shaft um is where the foot peg will be and so i'm thinking something kind of like this and then that way I can keep it pretty tight. And um, I don't know, I want it to be on the top of the frame um, just for like structure. That way I can like really stand on it without any flexing or anything like that. But also at the same time, hanging off the bottom isn't exactly um, a bad thing. Um, the only real concern I have is the um, exhaust pipe location. So Okay, I think I'm convinced. I've gone back and forth enough times now. <laughs> I wasn't really sure how I felt about it coming out and around the pipe and coming up. Um, you got to remember, I'm going to have a ton of ground clearance on this thing because by the time I get my front wheel far enough away from uh, the front of the frame, um, it's going to almost have like kind of a Frisco lean to it. And so because of that, it might not be such a bad thing to kind of get a little bit more going on underneath. Um, the other kind of benefit, I think, to doing it this way is I'm probably going to end up cutting these. Um, so these are MCM. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of options for like the later like press-in um, T140 uh, pipes. And so I found these MCM ones, so I'm pretty happy with them. Um, they're not too elaborate, but it, it, they'll work. Um, I'm probably going to end up cutting because they got that swoop up probably gonna end up cutting them shorter and putting slip on um i've got all sorts of different mufflers when i do that i don't really like the chrome on chrome union you know obviously one piece pipe looks way better but i think i could hide um the clamp behind here so it kind of disrupt the uh 
the line of like starting the pipe and then coming down and then all of a sudden there'll be this muffler and then if it's disguised back here i think i'd be pretty happy with that so again i talked myself into this working um be, if i did decide to go on top you know snaking it right in between the, the bottom of the transmission and the uh top of the pipe it would have like double zigzags in it and i just don't really like that idea um you know coming off the frame here and then up and then out and then up again and then across and just eh, i'm not not really into it um if i do it this way uh the other idea might be just to make my life easier i've got those one inch um call it that i or collars that i bought um these were for when i start like doing jigs and stuff um for repeat frames but i got a ton of them and the more i thought about it, it's like that might be a oops that might be a slick way to mount these foot pegs um where i could attach the clamp to the pipe or well the the new newly bent up foot foot mount uh foot peg mounts um but then i could clamp it on with, um, but if i put two of these on either side that's way more than enough clamping force um and strength and then i'll probably end up just replacing the allens with uh something i actually know what the grade is okay it looks kind of silly without a pipe in there just because like obviously there's this goofy gap um but the placement's good it's 80 degrees up and out so then that way like right as the pipe slips through um it just kind of blends nicely with it's mostly based on the transmission side to be honest with you um but the gaps are the same uh what i'm gonna do i might run these i'm not sure uh i do have a couple sets of anderson's at home uh, but i do like the way these look they look cool polished up so um essentially what it's gonna do Hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. I'll make a slug that goes in there um, that, well, I'm either going to make it so it pivots or I may just do like an uh, eighth inch plate um, with like the, the correct spacing here for it to bolt onto and look nice, um, but then actually come out and support the backside. It always made me nervous when they just have that little kind of stub, but um, yeah, I just, I don't like when there's like that two degrees of drop because everything's all like loose and worn out i just ugh. um but yeah so either way uh whether it's these or the other i just i want to have an alloy um or aluminum um foot peg on there i think that'll look cool and it gets me nice and tight close to that shifter um as far one thing we haven't talked about is the um brake lever because i'm eliminating that plate uh the brake is going to have to be kind of rethought um, that's kind of my biggest gripe with Triumph setups is I don't like the rear brake. Um, I don't like the way you have to set it up. It's just kind of inconvenient and annoying. So, um, I'm going to probably build off of this. I'll probably make something that all kind of comes together with the foot peg. Um, I just don't know what it's going to be yet. I might do like a Norton style, uh, cable. I don't know. I don't know how well Triumphs do with that. I'm sure somebody's done it. Um, so I could probably look and, and see how, uh, it performs, but foot pegs were pretty much there. Uh, like I said, I ended up with those one inch clamps. I overboarded at four of them. Um, that's going to be about as sturdy as it can get. I'll fully weld them once I take it off. Um, but yeah, I want to be able to like actually put weight, you know, if I, if I decide to, um, you know, stand on it to kickstart for whatever reason, um, I don't like it when it like flexes and bounces. I mean, that's why I'm not a fan of the, the factory, you know, reaching leverage ones. Um, this side stand lug is super stout too. So, um, you know, I, I'll be able to get away with uh, kicking it on its side stand. Um, we're kind of to that middle point where I would like to spend some time grinding and making things look good. Um, and then I'll obviously go back because seat hinge... Uh, sissy bar mounts, uh, chain tensioner, um, the brake system, however that ends up, uh, probably have to be filling in. I need to finish welding this. Actually, I'm going to have my brother TIG weld that so it's nice and pretty across the top there. Um, you know, I just, there's a lot left, uh, but I, like I said, I kind of want to just take a break on this for a little bit. 
um, do some of the grinding stuff, the stuff that doesn't need to be really documented. Um, I also have a frame of uh, one of my new clients, a buddy of mine. Um, he has a bunch of stuff he wants me to take care of on this frame. It had been kind of molested and needs needs some love. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of that while I'm doing mine because it's kind of the same same grind and making things look pretty, doing some uh, damage repair. So um, that front hoop and my frame need need a lot of hours put into it. Okay, well, um, I did finally get this going, and I've been riding it, and it is a lot of fun. Um, I want to rip it back down and paint it, uh, but I just want to make sure everything was working the way it was supposed to. Uh, I think I'm a little lean on my pipe. Um, it needs to uh, be a little richer, but I also, I think I talked about, I put a huge dry sprocket on this at one time. I think I want to go back to the tiny one that it came with, because now that it's manageable, I would like that instant um, torque you know when you take off so other than that man it is just it's a blast it rides great I'm super 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 happy with how it performs um, I'll see if I can get some video of me uh, ripping it so that way you guys can see how it did but I don't think it's good <laughs> okay we're gonna go shoot a video of me riding this thing this dork's gonna ride this. Overall, I'm really happy with how it works. Uh, it's way, way, way more uh, capable than the last one. Well, both of the last ones. Um, I obviously don't have any evidence of either of those, but <laughs> they were really bad if you ask him. Mark three. Yeah, best one. yeah. Mark three is always the best one. Uh, but no, it's it's way more fun. I I don't know if you could tell what I was following last year's uh, track, but that's why I was going the pattern I was going. But I just wanted to see because that's mostly what it was built for. But a lot of fun.